What's up friends? I'm Mel Legada, a British Filipino travel blogger, and in this video I'm sharing my top five favorite weekend getaways near Manila. So keep watching. You might be watching this video because you are based in Manila and you are just sick of the city's chaos and you need to get away, or you might have a few days to spend in Manila with no itinerary because you're stopping over before heading onto the islands, or you'd prefer to hit the road and explore the beautiful island of Luzon without spending time and money flying to other islands. Whatever the case is, welcome to this video. I've got your back. Luzon is the biggest island in the Philippines and it has world-class, world famous volcanoes, oceans, beaches, mountain ranges to explore without spending time or money getting to the airport and flying to another island. All of this is only one to five hours away from Manila by car. Unless, of course, you hit traffic. Ugh. Bear in mind, to get to any of these places, you can drive, rent a car, rent a car with a private driver if you can afford it, or you can hop on a cheap and cheerful bus, or get a private van shuttle. So let's dive in. My number one absolute favorite spot near Manila is the beautiful Tagay Thai region in Batangas, which is about two hours from Manila by car. Tagaytay and the stunning Ta'al Lake is a beautifully hilly escape in the province of Cavite. Tagaytay has amazing food, is known for its delicious local coffee, its wooden crafts, its sweet delicious local pineapples, and it is just an amazing place to get a glimpse of breezy mountainous life. Tagaytay is best known for the Ta'al Volcano, which is the world's smallest active volcano, situated inside Ta'al Lake, and then within Ta'al Volcano is Ta'al Crater Lake. So it's basically geographical inception. It is a lake within a volcano within a lake. Unfortunately, there was a devastating eruption of the volcano quite recently, and the area had to evacuate, but I do understand that the area is rehabilitating and next time I hit the Philippines I'm going to update you on what visiting Ta'al Volcano is like so look out for that. I've taken a boat ride to Ta'al Volcano about four, five, maybe six times in my life. I've taken friends there, I have taken family there, and it is just one of the most gorgeous places to go and appreciate nature. I recommend hiring a boat or a Ta'al tour and hiking up the crater, which takes around one hour to two hours, depending on how fit you are. And once you get up there, you can see some exquisite views and smell the eggy sulfur in the crater lake. You can have a restorative, fresh, sweet buco or young coconut to sip on as you just recover from the sweaty hike. The sun can get very, very hot by midday and you can get dehydrated very quickly. So if you are hiking, I recommend bringing an electrolyte drink or of course, just hiking well before midday. Because of its proximity to the capital, Tagaytay is an incredibly popular weekend getaway for many men or people who live in Manila. Sometimes it can get downright crowded and very trafficy, especially between Friday and Sunday, but it's always worth it for those amazing lake views. So make sure you plan your trip carefully if you are planning to head out on a weekend. The next place I recommend visiting in Manila is Anilao, which is around a two to three hour drive from Manila, depending on traffic. Anilao, which is in Mabini, is situated along the coastline curve of the region of Batangas. Batangas is a gorgeous province where so much marine life teems in its waters, where there are amazing hills and mountains and hikes to explore. And it's just a gorgeous place outside of the city to hit the reset button, get back into nature, and feel restored. After passing my open water scuba diving license, I spent almost every other weekend in Analao, and for good reason. Beautiful weather, crystal clear water, gorgeous sunsets, and best of all, a whole smattering of affordable resorts with incredible food and great coffee lined up all along the coast. Analao is very well known for its marine biology, for its marine life, so it's very popular, not just with scuba divers and snorkelers, but also underwater photographers. We saw turtles, clownfish, parrotfish, reef sharks, and so much more in those amazing waters. And during the night dives, we saw bioluminescent plankton, which was absolutely incredible. Anilao is especially famous for its macro marine life. So if you are a scuba diver or snorkeler or underwater photography enthusiast, then there are so many amazing places for you to visit. If you wanna find out more about diving in the Philippines, I will link my video here or you can check out my blog post below. The next place I recommend escaping to near Manila is 
Subic Bay in Zambales. Subic Bay is about a three hour drive from Manila. Zambales is full of mountains and is home to the world famous Mount Pinatubo volcano. Subic Bay itself is a picturesque bay that has all sorts of adventurous activities on offer. Whether it's kayaking or stand up paddle boarding or banana boating or jet skiing or just chilling beachside, there is so much for you to do whether you're going with friends, family, or you're solo adventuring. I would recommend horse riding at the beautifully maintained El Caballo Stables. I took a friend there and we went riding and our guide took us to this beautiful remote waterfall and I just felt like I was in this fairy tale universe. After that, we did the mangrove reef kayaking tour from Kamayan Beach Resort, where you can also rent paddle boards. The kayaking tour was absolutely beautiful. We went kayaking through this swampy green water, through mangrove trees, and when we paddled back out onto the open water, during the sunset we got to see baby dolphins in the dolphin enclosure from Subic Bay Marine Park flipping in the air and doing little somersaults as the day was winding to an end. That was absolutely one of my favourite memories from the Philippines itself, let alone just from Subic Bay. Also, I don't recommend going to Subic Bay Marine Park just because I do not believe in intelligent, amazing creatures such as whales and dolphins being trapped in marine parks, but of course that is down to personal preference. Subic used to be a US naval base, so there is still a lot of military or American influence in the region, which actually makes for fascinating culture and historical things to do as well. I highly recommend Subic Bay and of course if you have the time I would extend your stay and go and do the island hopping tour around Zambales as well and go and see the amazing views from all the other beautiful islands nearby. My next recommendation is Balair in Aurora. Balair, which is about a three to five hour drive from Manila, is the birthplace of Philippine surfing and it is where the famous international Hollywood film Apocalypse Now was filmed and introduced surfing to Philippine culture. Balair is perfect for a weekend escape, for some beachside relaxation, for some amazing coffee, great island vibes and just chilling under the sun. As I said, whether you're a surfer, non-surfer or general human, there is so much for you to do. There's a handful of resorts, hotels and a super strong entrepreneurial culture of local coffee shops and boutiques cropping up all around Balea. Balea is seriously chilled and all of the locals are absolutely lovely. You can rent a surfboard or hire a private instructor for surf lessons very affordably. You can rent a scooter and explore everything Balea has to offer, from waterfalls to hiking. You can go and climb a century-old Balea tree or you can just chill out beachside or poolside sipping a fresh buco. When I first moved to Manila, I also took surf lessons in Balea because they have very easy peelers, which is the smaller kind of waves that you can longboard on. So that was really good for getting my bearings and just learning to have the confidence to pop up and start riding the waves. So if you've wanted to try out surfing, this is a great place to try. Around Balea, there are some beautiful mangroves and hidden gems of nature just waiting to be discovered. Plus, the misty morning golden sunrise is genuinely something out of this world. I have stayed in Airbnbs and hostels and I have stayed in more luxury resorts and I have had a perfectly wonderful time regardless of where I'm staying. If you're keen to visit Balea, I have an insider's tips guide, so check that out in the link below. The next place I recommend is Baguio. Baguio, which is a breezy and artistic mountainous town in the Philippines, is about three to four hours drive away from Manila, and it's situated in the Benguet province. Baguio is also the main rest stop for travelers heading up to Rice Terrace Heaven up in other places like Banaue, Sagada, and Kalinga, or around eight to 10 hours away from Manila. Baguio is a very popular holiday and resort destination near Manila, mainly because of its beautifully breezy, cool weather. I have a huge fondness for Baguio because on my mother's family's side, they had a cabin in Baguio and we would so often go and visit and stay there. And there's something very special, very spiritual as well. You can feel a lot of spiritual activity around there. Despite getting more commercialized and traffic clogged, Baguio remains famous for its cultural scenes. 
Bagyo has the Ukai Ukai, which is a vintage clothing bazaar, selling all sorts of amazing things that people have either left behind, made or scavenged. There's an incredible night market selling all sorts of weird and wonderful delicacies. If you're not faint hearted and you love exploring local food items, I definitely recommend checking out the food market. You can also go horse riding, strawberry picking, explore the amazing museums like the Ben Cab Museum, who was hailed a National Artist of the Philippines. You can visit golf and spa resorts such as Baguio Country Club or Camp John Hay, and you can go to Good Shepherd Convent, a convent run by nuns that sells local jams and sweet treats made from locally sourced products like strawberries. Those would be my best weekend escapes near Manila because I have hand on heart been to them over and over again. They never fail to bring me joy, culture, experiences and crazy beautiful sunsets that are much needed and restore the soul. As I said, all of these trips can be done either on a shoestring budget or in total luxury. It is all down to you, what you can afford and what you're looking for for your weekend escape near Manila. If you have any other recommendations, please do drop me a comment and let me know your tips or favourite places to escape to near the city. If you found this video useful, please do like and subscribe. It really, really helps me out so much. In the meantime, take care, keep safe and keep adventuring.